Hi, I'm Shinern, and this is a complete guide to Stands Online. Though I'm not here to waste anyone's time, so I'm going to put on the screen what times you can jump to in order to get to the four separate segments of this video. And now with that out of the way, let's start off with the first segment, Items. And to start this segment off, it's probably important to get out of the way where the items can spawn. Every single red dot on this map represents where an item could possibly spawn, so feel free to pause the video or even screenshot it so that you can go ahead and look for the items at these locations. The first item you'll probably encounter is the arrow, which allows you to get stands in this game. They spawn every 2.5 minutes, or after the next update, will spawn every 2 minutes at a 50-50 chance. And that 50-50 chance is split with the next item that I will be introducing, which is the Rokaka fruit. This is typically used to reset your stand and additionally your stats. This next item is the first evolution item I will be introducing, which is the Requiem Arrow, which can give your stand a Requiem body and a Requiem move, and they spawn every 2 minutes at a 10% chance. And this next item is the second evolution item in the game, the Diary, which allows your stand to attain over heaven and a over heaven move, and it also is guaranteed to increase your stand stats. It spawns at a 5% chance every 2.5 minutes. Next are the three utility based items, which is the Steel Ball, which allows you to attain spin, the Vampire Mask, which allows you to get Vampire, and Caesar's Headband, which allows you to get him on. And now for the most useful item, if you're a broke boy like myself, the Roca Cola. It resets your stats and utilities with in game cash instead of Robux. Utilities are Vampire, Spin, and Hemon. And there really isn't much else to say, aside from it being very, very pricey. So I wouldn't suggest getting it unless you're quite a rich player already. And that concludes the first segment, and now on to the second segment, which is leveling and farming. To level, you're going to want to get one of these four stands, due to the fact that DOT damage, the one where it's poison or burn, gets you the most experience compared to other bodies. However, you can do about the same with just any stand with high speed and high power. That way you can barrage. And after that, as I covered in a previous video, you're gonna want to skip thugs and brutes and go straight to the gorillas, which is also zone 3. And just a quick disclaimer, I do not support animal cruelty. No animal cruelty, please. No, 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 no. And now with that out of the way, I'd like to explain why you want to do this. Now, of course, getting them into a group allows you to barrage them all, dealing a lot of damage to a lot of enemies. The majority of your experience at earlier levels is from that damage. However, I only suggest doing this if you're a higher level player, or prestige 10 or higher. Because otherwise, you're not really going to be dealing enough damage, and I would typically suggest you to just go through the normal quests. So basically, if you're a low level, just go in the normal order. But now to talk about farming methods. The three main cash farming methods are AFK farming, prestige farming, and boss hunting. Now first off is the easiest method to get into which is prestige farming. A person without the VIP game pass or the alpha tester badge should be able to get $8,571,428 an hour versus a person with the VIP game pass and alpha tester badge they should be able to get $34,615,384 cash per hour. However, if you only have the VAP Game Pass, you should get somewhere in between those two numbers. Now, onto the second method, which is boss hunting, which can range from literally zero cash, because there's a chance that it just doesn't spawn, or if you get absolute maximum efficiency, it's spawning every six minutes, or you finding it every six minutes and killing it basically instantly, solo, you should be able to get 30 million an hour. And the final method is AFK farming, which is where you have a macro, use knife throw on the hand over heaven, and then it should be able to one-shot golems. Now this is certainly the most difficult method get to get into because there is a very specific requirement, which is a the hand over heaven with either knife throw, knife throw and icicle, or even just icicle. However, I didn't test out the amount of cash you can get from the hand with only Icicle, because not only is the move already an unobtainable, but it's also slower than Knife Throw. 
so it's going to be a lot less efficient, so I just didn't calculate it. Though with the requirements out of the way, it's time to get into the actual cash you can get from this method. For the hands with VIP and just knife throw, they should be able to get 5,760,000 every hour. A the hand over heaven with VIP, knife throw, and icicle should be able to get 6,480,000 an hour. Now, uh, the hand over heaven without VIP and just knife throw should be able to get 3,840,000 every single hour. And then the hand over heaven with knife throw and icicle without VIP should be able to get 4,320,000 every single hour. Now, this method is probably the best in my opinion because you just leave it running while you're off doing errands or sleeping. Now, depending on how long you sleep, you could be getting a lot of cash without even really be playing the game. And, I have asked admins and multiple players, you are allowed to have a macro. Just no exploited clients or hacks or anything of that kind. Those will lead to a ban 100% of the time. However, the macro where it's just clicking your key for you, those are allowed. Though that should conclude the second section, and now it is time for the third segment which is trading and how to evaluate whether or not the stand you got is valuable. And while evaluating your stands, I heavily suggest you have the Stance Online Trello open. It provides you with a lot of good information about stands that can help you evaluate them. And because of how well the Trello is run, I would just like to give a quick thank you to all the Trello keepers. The work they do is insane considering they probably don't get paid for it because it's Roblox Lego game. So serious thank you to them. So back to evaluating the value of stands, what you're looking for is good stats and a non-mixed moveset. Now what is a mixed moveset? A lot of new players probably have heard this term when trying to trade and they aren't quite sure what it is. What a mixed moveset is, is a moveset with special and strength moves. Typically you only want all special or all strength moves. That typically brings up the value of a stand significantly. And by looking at the Trello, you can see the damage or speed buffs from certain bodies. Now, of course, a stand with high speed and high damage is going to have a powerful barrage, so that's going to be good with a strength moveset. However, a stand with a special moveset is going to be a lot better on a high damage body, so it can nuke. And on an extremely serious note, never walk up to a person in a public lobby and ask to see stats. And the last thing to remember is if you get any of these bodies, instantly Roku your stand. And that brings the third segment to an end, and also the video to an end. If there's anything I may have missed in this guide, please comment that down below, and I'll try and put it in a pinned comment. Other than that, thank you for watching, please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.